learning how to still the mind. Learning how to take the chaos in the mind and calm it down. Because most of us, especially here in the United States, our minds are just going, 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 going. There is never stillness. And until you have stillness of the mind, you will never come into contact with what I like to call the Archon. Which the Archon, ladies and gentlemen, in layman's terms, is the constant chatter in your mind that constantly, in a perpetual rat wheel-like way, just spools through your mind. You see, contrary to what most people think, people talk to themselves constantly. There is an internal dialogue that moves on autopilot. Now this internal dialogue exists behind what I like to call the curtain of the front of the mind. Those of you who watch my channel, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the front of the mind. The front of the mind is the part of your mind that you use on a daily basis to get mundane tasks finished. You use the front of your mind when you're driving your car from point A to point B. You use the front of your mind when you pay bills, when you shower, when you brush your teeth, when you watch television. There is a specific region of the mind that our daily lives has conditioned to be the dominant part of our mind. The way we live our lives has conditioned our physiology and our brain, you name it, to operate in a very specific way. Now behind the curtain of the front of the mind, there is, like layers to an onion, multiple different regions of your mind that you normally don't come into contact with when you are operating in the front of your mind. There might be situations where during the day, during a daydream, you slip out of the front of the mind and peek behind the curtain. But more often than not, when you are awake during the day, you are operating in the front of the mind. Now I call it the front of the mind because the front of something does not normally show you what's behind the front. So when you look at the front of a house, when you look at a door, you can see the front of the house, you can see the door, but you don't see the kitchen, you don't see the bathroom and all of the furniture and decor inside of the home. So the front of our mind, which we use constantly, most people will go the duration of their life only living in the front of their mind until they fall asleep, but by the time they wake up, they won't remember where they were because sleep is something that we can talk about in the future. We don't sleep properly, and because of that, we don't remember where we were when we were dreaming, so it doesn't really count that you escape the front of the mind while you sleep because you don't remember it by the time you wake up. And because you don't remember, remember it, you don't consciously integrate the lessons learned when you are traveling through the labyrinth of your mind while you sleep. But where the hell was I going with that? Excuse me, that was kind of a word soup. Behind the curtain of the mind, there's all of this chatter, folks. There's an internal dialogue that constantly moves through our mind and it projects thoughts into our mind. And we pick up on pieces, bits and pieces of these projections and they dictate what we think during the day or how we feel, targeting um, the, the chatter of the mind and learning to mute it. Because until you can do that, you're never gonna really have peace and you're never really gonna realize that there is a constant dialogue moving through your mind that's affecting how you live your life. I call this the Archon. So based on how we live, based on how we were raised, based on how we learn to interpret the world, we created an internal dialogue, ladies and gentlemen. And this is largely based on the beliefs that we harbor. On top of that, we also have something known as the, the, the Archon. How would I explain this? There's two forms of internal dialogue. There's the internal dialogue that, that you've generated and created, and there's also the Archon. I call it the Archon's influence, which are projected pieces of information that get beamed into the, the collective consciousness by a negative entity. So again, I wanna keep this short. I've explained this in great detail in prior videos. Uh, I have multiple videos publicly about this. So if you're interested, please, you know, go and watch those videos. I'll actually post links in the description box below of the particular videos that I have public where I talk deeper about what the Archon is and what its purpose is and why it projects um, images and emotions and thoughts into our mind. So we have two forms of internal dialogue. We have the self-generated internal dialogue, ladies and gentlemen, that, of, 
like I mentioned earlier, it's a byproduct of how we've been raised in this culture and the beliefs that we've created and the shifting of the assemblage point. But then we have the projections of the Archon, the real Archon into our mind. Now, because we operate in the front of the mind, most people will never ever know that they have an internal dialogue because they'll learn to misinterpret their thoughts. They'll learn to regard the internal dialogue as their own thinking. And when that happens, it generates the ego. The ego, ladies and gentlemen, is, gentlemen, is not being cocky. It's not being confident. The ego, the real ego, is the, is the you that gets generated by listening to these, these thoughts. And they start coming into your mind at a young age and you learn to identify with these thoughts. And by identifying with these thoughts, you buy into something that is not actually you. And it creates like an alter ego version of you. It's a really big problem. Now, luckily, there are tools that we can use to get our minds back. Magic is one of them. Contrary to what many, many people believe, magic is actually a system of tools that we can use so that we can experience the full potential of our minds. It's a purging system that we can use. There are a handful of tools that we can use to get rid of the Archon's influence. There are also a handful of tools that we can use so that we can locate the internal dialogue that's moving constantly in our minds and we can change it. We need to delete this internal dialogue. But in order to do that, we have to pull the curtain back that separates the front of the mind from what I like to call the back of the mind. The back of the mind are all the layers of the onion of your mind that you normally don't come into contact with when you're operating in the front. So once you come into contact with what's behind the curtain, you realize that there's all this stuff moving through your mind constantly that prior to you pulling the curtain back, you didn't even know it was there. And when the curtain's closed, you don't know it's there, but just because you don't know it's there consciously, that doesn't mean that it's not affecting your life. It's affecting your subconscious. It's affecting your moods. It's destroying your life. So in order to truly wake up, we need a purging system. There's always a purging, ladies and gentlemen. When anyone wants to truly become conscious, you have to purge yourself of what's keeping you from being able to express the full, your full potential. It's just like Yoda says in the first uh, Star Wars film, I think it was the first one, where he's teaching Luke to use the Force. You have to unlearn what you've learned. There's all sorts of crap in your mind that is stuffing your mind to, its, to the brim. And because of that, there's no free space. You don't have any emptiness in your mind. And that may sound like a bad thing to say you need emptiness, but emptiness is synonymous with stillness. Your mind isn't supposed to be full of all these projections and worries and guilts and depression and all this bullshit. And as you purge your mind of the contents of your programmed mind, as the stuff gets deleted, you attain wisdom. You see, as you unlearn, you learn. It's not like you have to get rid of all the crap in your mind and unprogram and then, oh, you know, I'm f my mind's free. I'm gonna go pursue wisdom now. No, as you delete what's plaguing your mind, you grow as a byproduct, byproduct of it because you come into contact with that which was plaguing you or keeping you from growing. And once you delete those poisonous uh, you know, attachments to your mind, again, it frees up space and you start to look at reality from a completely different perspective. Your assemblage point starts to move. So again, there's a handful of ways that we can purge our minds, but first and foremost, we need a system that we can use to locate what I like to call the foreign installations of the mind. All the crap that exists behind the curtain of the mind, or the curtain of the front of the mind, everything behind that curtain, these are the foreign installations. And we develop these foreign installations by interacting with the world at a young age without really knowing how to do it. You see, you were never taught how to analyze reality properly. You were never taught at a young age how to have a mind of your own. Before you could even finish playing 
and having a good time as a child, you were forced into the education systems, which are basically glorified FEMA camps. It's called a re-education camp. It te these camps teach you how to live in a world of solid objects. They teach you to not be able to see energetic fields around anything. They take you out of the energetic truth of reality. They, they, they put you into a world of physical objects because they start to fill your mind full of beliefs about how the world works, this, that, and the other. And because, because you're young and impressionable, you take all of that information, break it apart into manageable units and create beliefs. And we know that beliefs dictate, you know, beliefs feed the subconscious mind information on how to in create your reality. So if you don't think that the education that you went through at a young age <laughs> instructed your consciousness on how to interpret reality, you are in for a rough surprise. And as you deprogram, you'll begin to realize. So as, as you went in through the education system, you had all this crap stacked on top or into your free mind. And it taught you how to look at reality in a very specific way. And as you accepted all of these ideas and turned them into beliefs, it channeled your awareness to look at reality a certain way. And as a byproduct of that, by default, your assemblage point shifted into a new location. That is largely what is going on in these schools, ladies and gentlemen. They are rerouting the assemblage point and locking it into a new position on a collective level. And that's why by the time you hit high school, everybody pretty much for the most part is the same. Oh.